You're here to hear about extensibility for SAP S for HANA. My name is Andreas Muno. I'm part of the product management organization for S for HANA. So to the agenda, why do we have to talk about extensibility at all? What is the approach for SAP S for HANA in this respect? Uh, which tools are available? Uh, then a short extensibility demo at the end, and then I go to the key takeaways and the disclaimer. So whenever I'm going to talk about anything for the future, don't put undue reliance on that for your purchase decisions. So why do we even have to talk about extensions, about extensibility? So in which cases would you rather opt for extensions. So whenever you want to do something that is out of the ordinary, something that is not your personal standard. So with, with this, we are right at where, where Jürgen uh, left us off with the intelligent enterprise and what we're actually trying to offer here. So with s hana Cloud firmly here in the operations space, uh, in, the, in the O of O data, we're actually providing for an EOP solution that tries to provide for a pretty solid standard to you as our customers and to uh, you, our partners who need to implement that. And we actually try to convince you standard is good, right? Implement the standard and you have the industry best practices right away implemented. There are always situations where standard alone is not sufficient, right? Where you have to have something beyond the standard. It's typically when as a customer, you want to differentiate towards your competitors, right? That's, that's usually the, one, the number one driver is, I need to have something that is out of the ordinary because if I'm just as everyone else, how would I ever be competitive? You can always compete with your, with your product, having a unique product that no one else can do. Well, then your, your ERP software can be completely standard, granted. But how many of you have that? Show of hands. How many of you have unique products that they can compete with uniquely and don't have to di differentiate anything with their business processes? None of you. But none of you has, have that, that opportunity to just differentiate in the market by product. So you have to differentiate in some other fashions. And that is usually where extensibility, the ability to extend your s hana cloud your, your S4HANA system, uh, your ERP system comes into play. So this business perspective is, is really um, what, what usually drives this need for, for um, extending. Right? It's the differentiation of business processes, the, the idea to, to get to, um, to compete better by having something unique. Uh, there are a few other factors like getting better insight to action. Jürgen talked about insight to action this morning. So you, you basically get better insights, context-based context insights, and then you take decisions and you implement them into your operations right away. And from an, from an IT perspective, uh, we, have, we have learned from experiences of our customers on-premise uh, what it means to well, to differentiate with enhancements, with modifications to an ERP system, right? And some of our customers may have realized over time that they overdid it, right? They, they, they used their ERP system like a development platform, which they were totally entitled to do, but they robbed themselves of the ability to upgrade their ERP software. And what that made them was suddenly slow and not competitive anymore because they were losing vital aspects of a growing infrastructure of ERP um, application capabilities. But they couldn't upgrade anymore, so they, they, they basically had the issue that they were probably not safe anymore because they could be hacked. The longer one, one particular um, version of an ERP is out there, the more likely it is that it will eventually get hacked, right? It's hackable. So when you, when you can't upgrade, well, you're robbing yourself of the capability to bring your system back to the good standard. So from an IT perspective, it definitely made, makes sense, especially now in the cloud, to think a little bit differently about the way how 
when you want to extend, how you extend. Right? You want to, want to keep things separate as much as possible. You want to separate your standard system, your system that does most of your um, ERP transactions, from those systems where you have most of your innovation done in. Right? You innovate in one system and you run your operations, your regular operations, in a different system as much as possible. So that's, that's the idea. So you want to have different systems for those types of activities, right? And you want that so you can have your regular ERP system follow those standard procedures and follow the upgrade cycle that, in this case, SAP delivers to you. Right? So you're always safe, you're always on the, la on the la latest level of innovation that basically is the, the level of innovation in the market. You get market-leading software that way, and your own innovation you keep separate, you keep separate so you can innovate much faster. You know, with S4HANA Cloud, you today, for example, you get uh, every, every quarter you get an update, right? a, a new product version in, in, in essence. If you do your own innovation, you may want to have daily delivery of something new. At least you want to have the capability to deliver something new every day, right? So you, you have different cycles of, of innovation in what the SAP standard software delivers to you and what you may want to do on your own. So that, that also talks here to the, the development productivity. You can be much more productive in a separate system that allows you for very fast um, deliveries and for very fast development. And when you think about uh, renovating your, your Z code, many of, of your partners and many of your customers, your partners, you probably have uh, Y code, um, right? Y code in, in SAP uh, ERP. Um, as a customer, you have you would have uh, Z code uh, in your in your enhancements in your uh, own additions, and if you're now moving to to S4HANA, if you're moving to S4HANA Cloud, you may want to um, keep some of that IP, at least some of it, and re well bring it back into S4HANA Cloud into S4HANA, right? And there are ways to do that but there are sometimes better ways to achieve the same thing by moving it all the way to the SAP Cloud Platform. And we're going to talk about that um, in, in just a little bit. So Jürgen this morning talked about the business technology platform that, um, that we, we delivered to you. Um, that uh, is basically the SAP Cloud Platform. Um, that's the analytics that now come with uh, SAP um, S4HANA Cloud. And then we have these database and data management aspects. And then, well, in the SAP Cloud Platform, that's the application development and integration capabilities. Right? And, and on this platform, so we, we basically want to urge you, consider the SAP um, technology platform for any of your innovations that you do on your own, for anything that you want to implement to differentiate. Now, getting a little bit more concrete with the concept of extensibility for S4HANA Cloud. So with, so in, in, in both in S4HANA Cloud as well as in the SAP Cloud Platform, um, you can enhance, well, you can use basically all, all three of uh, the, the, the layers. You can enhance on the database level, you can enhance on the application level, le um, level or you can enhance on the user interface level. Um, what I, I still want to emphasize here is your objective should be over time at least, and in principle, to use the, the SAP Cloud Platform in a side-by-side -side approach as much as possible and like do as little as possible in the S4HANA Cloud. So you have capabilities in the S4HANA Cloud to enhance, to, 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 to extend, but you should keep that to the utmost minimum just to keep your agility, right? So in that way, you will not ever fall into that uh, trap of, of on-premise ERP again to overdo it with enhancements, with customizations and so forth. 
in the ERP system, but you really keep things that should be separate, separate. To illustrate that a little bit more, I have a little example here. So let's just assume the, the business problem was that you had a custom field in S for HANA Cloud that you now needed to validate. So it's an address field, right? And you need to validate if this address data is actually a valid address. And now you have the, the typical set of questions that come um, with this type of problem. So, so how do I actually solve this problem? So what options do I have to solve the problem? You could go ahead and just code within s Cloud with the extension capabilities in s Cloud and just make it happen there. Well, if you're into agile development, um, if you're a modern programmer, a modern developer, um, or a modern IT, head of IT, you would want to do on your own as little as possible. But you would want to reuse as many already developed patterns and, and code snippets that, that are already out there, that you can just take advantage of and integrate into your landscape. So you wouldn't necessarily want to code something on your own in the first place. Like the, the idea of reusing, using anything open software, open APIs and so forth, should always be like the first thing on your mind, right? Because that's, that's basically where, where you can save the most time. You just look for a library, where, where can I find that type of code that I need and apply it and I'm pretty much done, right? And speaking of patterns, so where can I find those patterns? What, what, what kind of patterns, what sets of patterns can I use? Where are they? How do I follow those and so forth? So the idea here is basically you, you, you have the business problem of entering that address and get it validated. So the, the idea that I want to suggest here is basically to say we want to send that address data to a data quality service. And as it so happens, the SAP Cloud Platform, of course, um, has that capability with its uh, data quality services. And that it would send back that result and then uh, the user gets the respective feedback. Either the address is not valid and I can't save it, um, save a better one, basically. Um, or if it's, if it's all good and validated, it would be it would be stored here. The point here really is, and uh, the, I, I put the link to this example, uh, this, this microservice that is available on the SAP Cloud Platform right in there. I put that example uh, in here really just to, to illustrate there is a whole library of these patterns and of these type of, types of microservices available. Is any one of you um, familiar with the, uh, with the API Business Hub? I see a show of hands, three, five, seven. Okay, we will talk about the API Business Hub a little more in just a moment. But that's basically, when you look for patterns, look at the API Business Hub, api.sap.com. Now, when it comes to this differentiation, it depends a lot on what kind of differentiation you would like to make in your, in your business processes or with your data. So you see here, very close to SAP s uh, as uh, the pattern is then called in-app extensibility. There's a whole bunch of um, application enhancements that are possible. You can add your own database fields and objects. You can add your own logic. Um, something that you have always been able to do is create your own email templates, expose the data of, of, an, of a CDS view, for example, through um, an OData read API, and then possibly create your custom analytics on top of that. And you can, of course, expose fields and then uh, put them out on the, on the user interface and, and other user interaction patterns. When the type of uh, differentiation you would like to achieve is more influenced by topics like the Internet of Things, where basically your, your operational data here out of s are being augmented by Internet of Things, streaming data, and so forth, right? it is probably a good idea 
to look for the SAP cloud platform's capabilities to, to manage those, and actually for the, for the broader uh, SAP digital platform, uh, to, to manage those context data. Um, similar here when it comes to data science and intelligence, if that's your objective, you want to actually extract data and, and uh, submit them to machine learning and so forth. These are topics that you would typically rather want to do here on the SAP Cloud Platform. Uh, same with actual process innovation and um, when it comes to um, business to consumer and business to business kind of services like EDI, where you need a lot of mapping uh, back and forth between different types of APIs. And then of course also when, when, um, when you actually want to create a completely new user experience, right? In those cases where you basically need to contextualize as for HANA data um, with something else, or you want to expose them in a completely different fashion, uh, you need to take advantage of the integration capabilities of S4HANA with uh, the, the user interfaces. You can enhance the user interfaces. You can use the Fiori Launchpad. You can uh, use the rules and workflows across S4HANA and the SAP Cloud Platform. And you can extend the processes of S4HANA uh, in the SAP Cloud Platform. That's here, these process innovations. Uh, and of course, you can replicate data back and forth. Um, I'll talk about business events a little more in my next session on in, uh, integration that is right after this one. Oh, and I should actually talk about this one. So who could imagine what classic extensibility might be? HR payroll. Nope. Good guess, but <laughs> no? Baddy. I hear bit Who said baddy? Yes, baddy. So that's actually a goodie. So it's a business add-in. Very poorly German uh, translation, right? <laughs> to, to make it, or to word, word play to make it a baddie. It's a goodie for development. It's a goodie for the customer, seriously. Um, this is really the, the, the way how to extend SAP code with custom code without actually uh, having to um, modify any of the SAP code. So the, the, this classic extensibility and, and as well, like the, the, the appends to tables, that is what we would call classic extensibility. Thank you. So with, with the cloud platform, and um, again, Jürgen talked this morning about the SAP cloud, pl cloud platform extension factory. Um, with, with the cloud platform, we have a pretty solid way how to extend not only the uh, S4HANA cloud and uh, on-premise, but also uh, all of the SAP products, SAP branded products. And in addition, if you have, many of you do, if you have other SAP solutions or even third-party solutions and you want to bring them all together uh, and integrate them all and extend them all together um, using the SAP cloud platform may bring you a couple of benefits. So and you see here, so the reason why I had to put the disclaimer in at the very beginning, uh, what, sorry, this goes a little too fast, um, is, is really, so we are, we are currently working on making sure that really all of these products work seamlessly together. You can allude to that, we're not there yet, right? We're working on it, we are, we are going to ship certain um, integrated examples. The point here is that over time we are evolving the SAP cloud, cloud platform to be really the hub for any kind of extension. And how would you extend? Well, you have different um, runtime capabilities available. You have the ABAP environment available um, as of, I think, last year. By now, it's in general availability on the SAP Cloud Platform. So any of your code that you used to have on premise, you can actually now elevate it quite literally into the SAP Cloud Platform and make it available in different fashion. You can even think of, if it's a really smart development of yours, you can even think of monetizing it through the SAP Cloud Platform. Right? Make it, instead of having it a private thing that you did just for your company, 
you can think of, well, I can put it into the SAP Cloud Platform. Now it's in the cloud. Now I can actually make money by, from it by, by having other people use my very specific um, uh, application. So then, of course, it's not an enhancement anymore, but um, it, its own app. The point here is more how can you really take advantage of code that you have already built in the past. So you can elevate it that way. Um, also, Jürgen talked about the event bus. So uh, anything, any application that throws events uh, here on the left-hand side can be processed further uh, through the event bus. You can then basically uh, trigger follow-up uh, follow events use situation handling. There was a very good workshop earlier today on situation handling. It's a, a concept within S4HANA Cloud through the SAP Cloud Platform where you can define your own situations. Um, so that, that is being enabled here. And of course, with everything that's in the extension factory, like the development environment, um, like the cloud connector that, that gets your uh, SAP on-premise systems, uh, connected to the cloud applications and the cloud platform. And of course, here the cloud SDK, if you're more on the, on the Java side, if you're into um, developing continuously, um, deliver continuously, this, this cloud SDK should be something that you consider for your own uh, development processes. And then, of course, the, the, the cap and Eclipse. So with, with that, you, you may wonder, how do I decide where I now actually put my extensions? Where do I develop my extensions? There are different ways how to look at that. So if you, if you want to basically keep your existing extensions that you have made on premise in the past, and you just want to move them from ERP to S4HANA, you can probably just take advantage of classic extensibility. You don't have to move them anywhere else, but you can just take advantage of the existing baddie infrastructure that we still have with S4HANA. Um, if you want key users in S4HANA to make certain fields and so forth available to all your other users, the so-called in-app extension capabilities of S4HANA are exactly the right, the right thing to go for. But as soon as you want to go beyond the, the scope of S4 proper, then it's really a good idea to look for the SAP Cloud Platform. And when you want to develop entire um, applications, more or less standalone applications that may use some S4 data, you're probably um, very well advised to, to, to use the SAP Cloud Platform and then just use the S4 data for that. So there, there's a slightly different decision matrix, um, but it, it in, in essence talks about the same kind of pattern. So when you, when you look here, so basically when, whenever things are really very close to S4HANA and very specific to S4HANA, use S4HANA to extend, that means, or at least take advantage of its uh, extensibility cap uh, extension capabilities, right? Um, as soon as the use case is either not all that closely related with S4 or not at all related to S4, well, then you're definitely better off with the SAP Cloud Platform. And uh, you should often use S4 and the SAP Cloud Platform together. So, and we have here a couple of use cases, basically, or target group definitions, where, um, you, where you would see how that all goes together. When your target group is an S4 user, like an employee, for example, that 80% that of their daytime they, they spend in an S4 system, well, it makes a lot of sense to then look for extensions within S4HANA Cloud or S4, uh, S4HANA on-premise, right? Extend within there because it's the same, the same user experience that they want to have uh, in the first place. However, when you have a target group that never touches an S4 system, it doesn't really make all that much sense to put the enhancement there to, or to put the um, 
the differentiation in there. You would want to have the SAP Cloud Platform be your, your go-to system. And similar here with UI design, if you want to keep it as close as possible to S4HANA because that is the user experience that the user expects, well, you want to keep it within S4 or at least in the same pattern as S4. So in, in the SAP Cloud Platform, we, we deliver those patterns that allow you to develop as if it was an, uh, an original S4HANA application. Right? The, the, web, uh, the web IDE that I talked about earlier, for example, gives you all the patterns that we use with S4HANA cloud development as well. So you can build um, applications, um, user interfaces that look exactly the same way, and you can even put them back on the floor plan on the Fiori launch pad um, on the Fiori launch pad uh, of that same user in his S4 environment, they wouldn't even know that you developed a completely new application for them on SAP Cloud Platform, and it runs on the SAP Cloud Platform, but it feels and looks and behaves exactly like an S4 original application. So that's, that's how, these, how the, the SAP Cloud Platform really helps enhance that whole user experience. And there are a number of supporting tools for S4HANA Cloud, uh, the, the view browser, the extensibility cockpit, uh, the inventory, uh, and so forth, right? To find them within your S4HANA Cloud application, they're um, accessible for the respective users with those, um, with those capabilities, with those roles, right? And then we have here the extensibility explorer. I'm going to get into that a little bit more in just a minute. Um, but there are plenty of other applications that help you really extend on or with the SAP Cloud Platform and that you can explore um, through, for example, the API Business Hub. But like your, your, first, your first point that you should be going to is really the extensibility explorer that, that gives all the different types of use cases that you may have um, and, and gives you examples how to use them, gives you tutorials how to use the different extensibility concepts that we have in place. And we should not forget at this point, on the SAP app stores, we, we have, of course, applications available that you can integrate with. As I said earlier, why develop something new when you can just buy something off the shelf and integrate with that? That is usually the easiest, best, and well, the fastest way to come to a new and differentiating solution. You just stitch together what's already available in a completely new fashion that no one has done before. And that way you have a new application that differentiates you in the market, right? And so um, look out for apps that are readily available on the SAP store and on the SAP App Center, where our partners put their applications that integrate well with S4HANA and S4HANA Cloud. So the Extensibility Explorer I'm trying to show you live and online. It does. So, so here you, you really find uh, the, the whole set of experiences that uh, you may want to get. So it, it basically talks in ex extensively about in-app uh, extensibility, everything you can do from within uh, S4HANA, and then all the capabilities that the SAP Cloud Platform delivers with the uh, SDKs and the APIs that we have on both sides in S4 and um, the SAP Cloud Platform to really bring the best of these worlds together. And further down here, you have a whole set of sample scenarios uh, that, that help you explore further how this works and then how to build, how to extend, which APIs to use, uh, how to use a Cloud SDK, uh, how to mobilize your applications further and so forth which patterns to use. I, I talked about patterns earlier, right? Which patterns to use in this context. So now you basically, you, you know where to go when you need to extend something within S4HANA Cloud or S4HANA. And there is a lot to explore on your own before you come back to us and say, we can't find it, it's not there. I need something else. I need you, SAP, to deliver to me something else. 
that allows me to extend to enhance my S4 application better. And for those, when it's a go live, so when you're in the middle of a, an implementation project for S4 HANA or S4 HANA Cloud, please contact your onboarding coach. Make sure that you know who that is uh, or, get, or get one, right? Whoever your SAP contact is in the project, for the project, make them file an impediment, a so-called go live impediment. That will prompt us in product management to contact development with your impediment and say they need this additional feature to be enhanced or to be enhanceable, to be extensible, right? So don't hesitate when you have that situation, don't hesitate to, to come back to us and say, we need this, it's important. We cannot go live without it. Right? If however, it's something you can you consider for, for the future, you think it's a good idea to have yet another product feature and you're very specific about it, you know exactly if this was available, that would probably benefit many customers, not just myself. So when you have any of those non-go live critical um, suggestions, please submit and vote on improvement requests. So the, the customer influence portal that I've referenced here, uh, we have for many topics, among them extensibility and integration. So I usually get the ones for integration. My colleague Marco gets the ones for extensibility. And uh, so this customer influence portal is a social portal. So it's not just that you submit something and then we do something, but it's like you submit something and then you shore up support among your peers for your submission. And when it hits a certain threshold, then we look at it and we actually might develop it in one of the upcoming releases. But it's, it's, a, it's actually a very good way to, well, co connect to your peers and to discuss the actual, well, business impact of your suggestion and um, the, the business need. Really, if you can show up multiple other customers uh, or partners, we are much more likely to consider that as, as a future development. All right, we come to the demo. What are we going to see at the demo? Um, we are going to see how to add a database field in S4HANA. So we are looking at in-app extensibility here and how to expose that field um, in a particular, um, in, 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 an existing, um, in an existing application. So it's really as simple as that. We, we just add a new field to a UI but of course, if you need to um, add a new field, we first have to add the field to the database and then uh, cascade it up to the UI. And I have recorded this demo. All right, so we log on here to our S4 system. And if, we're, if we have that authorization for extending the applications, we can then log on to, uh, we, we can then use here the custom fields and logic application and just go ahead and add a new field. And you saw there were already a whole list of custom fields in this, in this application. And now the first thing we need to do is here uh, to select the business context. The business context is something like sales order processing, purchase order processing. And you'll see it, the, the list should come up in just a moment, right? where, where you have some idea what, um, what the business process context might be. And you may have to look for it a little. It's, it's not always as self-explaining as I wish it was. And so our objective in this particular um, example is to enhance the product master, right? So we want to add a field to the product master transactions or to a particular product master transaction. So we enhance the product master. I'm gonna pick that here. 
we give it a smart label. Okay, so we call it product risk. So there might, might be some risk involved with this product. And then we, we select the type. And you see here there's a whole there's a whole list of possible types available with which we can enhance S4HANA Cloud, right? So you can have uh, amount fields, you can have checkboxes, code lists, time, web addresses, and so forth. But today we're just going to go for, for a text field for simplicity. And you see we can also make that field length, whatever we think is appropriate for that kind of uh, extension. We say create and edit. And uh, then we go from there. We can, we can keep editing um, our, our field here, but now we just actually want to go to the UIs and reports. So on, on this screen, you will basically go for the particular business context, so the particular user experience, the particular app that you want to enhance, right? And I believe it is the product somewhere down there. Oh yeah, here. So there's product basic data we need to en uh, enable. <laughs> and there is more further down here. So it's product active core entity. Some of these things you basically have to have to test out a, a little bit or really, really le read the product description. So the, the, um, the, the help text will typically help you. So anything that you find when you click this button up here, the help um, should provide you with the respective information how to use this application. Then we're going to save this. And yeah, once it's saved, once it's saved, we, we can actually publish this new field, right? So now we have, we have that field of it. So th this field is now publishing. So that might take a little while. Right? The, the actual publication might take a little while. Um, it, it's in the cloud. It takes a little while at, at times. So but then you have this product risk um, available. And I believe the next step is it? Now the next step was it's not getting there. There, okay. So we, we get out of that application and then we go to the product master actually. So now we want to find out how does, so how do we actually use this field in the application itself, right? So we've added that field, at least it said so, we published it, right? So we now have to be confident that we actually can find that field and add it to the UI. And let's see how that, how that actually looks like and how we would do that. So we try to go to the product. Uh, do we have one product master? Okay, we go to the product master. And we go to some, it, it doesn't, at that point, it doesn't really matter which of the product masters that we had already created we, we're looking at, and you, you'll see in a moment why. Um, so in, in, in any of these product masters that we're in right now, right, we, we would just go here to the context. So that's the user context, right? It's the user context. And, and here we would then um, add adapt UI. So this user is a particular user, right? He has special rights. He can adapt the UI. And in the field, or 
next to the field old product number, we want to add this new field, and it's called product list extension. That's exactly what the field that we just added, right? And here it is, right? Here is the, the new field that we just added is already available on the user experience. And then we save that, and then it's available. So if we do it this way with this particular, particular user's authorization, it can then permeate to all the users um, that belong to that group, right? You can further differentiate that, um, like who sees what, um, but at least this user for sure will have this field available for that product risk differentiation. All right, we're coming to the question and answers anyway in just a second. Just let me wrap this up um, real quick. So you would then basically save this and then uh, publish it for all. And then you can basically, since you would do these kind of changes in your queue system, right, in the quality system, and then it will be transported into the production system, right? So everyone can, can then take advantage of this field. All right. So that was that demo. Was there a question to the demo that we just saw? Um, so the question was, is this tool, the extensibility capabilities that we just saw for s Cloud, is this available for all SAP Cloud applications? And the answer is no, unfortunately not. So far, uh, each of the cloud applications has their own concept, if any. Right? So not all cloud has extensions by default. In s Cloud, we knew that this was going to be an issue if we hadn't, it, uh, hadn't built it in, so we built it in from the beginning. Uh, in other applications, we know they only allow you to extend through APIs. Right? So you would use the APIs that they expose and then develop something new and fresh somewhere else like the SAP Cloud Platform. This works for S4 Cloud, yes. Um, that's called the Extensibility Explorer. I mean, um, the, so you, find, you find it under Extensibility. There's, there's a whole Extensibility Management, I think, is the group. Extensibility have a different name? No, no, no. It's like who, whoever, so not every, um, not every business area has their own extensibility tool. So in s hana Cloud, extensibility is built in, and a user with a proper authorization can access this extensibility management. Okay, last question. Is there a, this tool can uh, ex, uh, do the customized CDM view of uh, S4 Cloud in order to HANA Um, I think for CDS views, we, we have certain capabilities, yes. If the CDS views are released to you as a customer to be changed or, well, uh, amended, right? So you can, you can add your own fields to the ones that are released, yes. Yes, exactly. Yes. So the, the, the current, so with the CDS view capabilities, you would basically use this um, in-app extension framework and, and basically add your own fields to your CDS views. That was the question. OK. Good. I'll switch back. So you would typically use extensions to differentiate your business. If you don't have a reason to differentiate your business, don't. <laughs> Right? I'm very blunt about that. Don't. Keep it as, as clear and clean as possible. It is going to make your life a lot easier. Right? If you don't have to, do not, do not just because you can um, put in extensions 
and you know frills and whatnot in your in your business software. Make sure that you have a very very good business reason to extend the core the standard. If you decide you need to extend S for HANA Cloud, you will get a stable lifecycle. It's going to be flexible for you and it's going to be reliable, right? And we have a couple of different tools available um, with that simple in-app extension to more complex side-by-side -side extension capabilities. If you can, well, you, you can take advantage of, a, of our ecosystem of partners uh, with the applications that they have published on the, uh, on the partner apps store. And of course, with the extension capabilities, you can also run hybrid scenarios and you should take advantage of those capabilities to run your, your, your hybrid scenarios. There is plenty of information available to learn more about, um, about extensibility of S4HANA Cloud with the SAP Cloud Platform and otherwise. Um, so if you go back and study this, this material um, on, on um, I think you, you got it as part of your admission here. Um, all, all of these are hyperlinks available to you. And there are white papers and the Explorer and books available. So I, I strongly encourage you to read further if this is a topic of interest to you. Um, of course, there is also f further learning available. And there are a couple of related um, information topics. So there is a session on SAP Cloud Platform. There is a specific one for s hana EDAP extensions on-premise and in the cloud. You may want to consider that, CAA 370. Um, and then there is more on extension use cases for your intelligent enterprise, also very much recommended. Thank you for attending this session.